Greg Coomer and Lawrence Yang from Valve sat down with PC Gamer to give some updates on how the launch is shaping up. They said that they are on track for a February launch and gave some additional details that I think is mostly good news for the Deck Gang. This week I discussed that and some other cool Steam Deck news. Let's get into it. What's good Deck Gang? That PC Gamer interview was pretty encouraging. The headline coming out of it of course is that Valve feels like they're on track for a February launch. I would have liked some stronger language than quote, we feel like we're on track, end quote, but given the circumstances I totally understand. The fact that they're even having this conversation right now is heartening. It seems like their aim is to reassure us that devices will be ready in February, and I don't think they'd be doing that if there wasn't a fair level of confidence behind that. They indicated however that this won't be a typical hardware launch. A typical hardware launch is often front loaded with units with a sharp decline after that. Rather than that big bang approach, Valve is aiming for a more steady rate of units delivered and sold. I see this as good news as it implies that they have a steady supply coming and that they have confidence that the demand will be steady too. And here's the part that caught my eye. Coomer says, quote, if you extend that timeline out through 2022 and all the way to 2023, we expect to be building on our numbers constantly throughout that whole time to the point where there's many millions of customers, if things go the way we think they will, who are using the Steam Deck by the end of that year or so through 2023, end quote. I read that as multiple millions of units sold as early as the end of 2022. Even if you read that as the end of 2023, this is huge. If you recall my AAA video, I said a lot of my concerns just disappear if the deck sells multiple millions of units and Valve sounds confident that they'll hit that goal in year one or year two. That is amazing news. Some bad news is that there's not just one or even two components that are at high risk for causing a bottleneck in production. Coomer said they identified 50 components that could be potentially difficult to get in the quantities needed. That may sound like an impossible amount, but if you remember the teardown video, they actually have a number of PCBs and each of those are going to have multiple integrated circuits, not to mention the circuitry needed for their custom built analog sticks. They said that they've been working hard to make sure they get the commitment they need from their suppliers, but as we know, anything can happen here. And that's the reason they had to delay from December to February. Interestingly, it sounds like this means they're going to need multiple suppliers for even the same individual parts. Think back to the fact that some dev kits have Samsung memory and others have Micron memory. In practice, this shouldn't mean anything for the customers, but I think it adds some complexity to the QA process for Valve. And here's the final tidbit. In covering this story, GamingOnLinux.com cited some data from PlayTracker that estimates approximately 700,000 people have placed a deposit on the Steam Deck. If everything I'm discussing here is true, it implies that everyone that has placed a deposit so far will be able to purchase and receive their deck in 2022. And then some, right? Do we get from 700,000 reserved to multiple millions sold through Steam alone? I'm inclined to think not. I believe that the road to multiple millions sold involves retail. It sounds to me like we'll start seeing decks in stores by the end of next year, which is great news for everybody. But you know what would be great news for me? If you hit the like button on this video. And as always, subscribe and slap the bell for more Steam Deck coverage. So that's all pretty exciting. I know I made a few inferences there, but what do you think? Do you think retail is in the near future for Steam Deck? Do you think everyone that reserved a deck so far will get one within the next year? Leave your thoughts in the comments. Also from that PC Gamer interview, Greg Coomer shared that Valve are working hard on getting their own titles deck ready. They say that this past week they added full controller support to Dota 2 as well as a new 4 player co-op mode. They're also tightening up and changing some things that would improve existing controller support to CSGO. This would include retouching things like radio menus in game, and they committed to giving the same love to Left 4 Dead 2 and I've already reported on some of the changes that they've made to Half-Life 2. And of course, they say that the Portal games are already deck verified, so that's great to hear. Next, let's talk about the Steam Deck unboxing. In my last video, I talked through Valve's blog post about the deck's packaging and the carrying case. This week, we've gotten some new videos. Shout out to Mosquito93, who is a viewer of this channel, but has been sharing some cool scoops over on the Steam Deck subreddit. He shared some tweets from people with dev kits that take us through the unboxing and the initial setup of the Steam Deck. While the quality of the setup video may not be ideal, the process does seem straightforward, and it looks like we don't really miss anything. 
Together, these two videos are the most complete unboxing we've seen since the Ali 213 video, which is pretty out of date now considering the packaging was even more bare and the case had that valve blue interior. I also hope this means that the NDA is beginning to get more lax and we'll see some details that we hadn't seen up to this point. Another topic I wanted to follow up on since my last video was the performance of Final Fantasy VII Remake. It's out now, so I don't have to theory craft anymore. There are real life impressions, and I have a few high points for you. The biggest headline comes from PC Gamer as well as the good folks at Digital Foundry. That headline is sadly, this is not a good PC port. As Wes Fenlon puts it, quote, there's no variable frame rate option, no way to tweak anti-aliasing, toggle V-Sync, or control effects like motion blur. This port also doesn't let you control resolution scaling, which is now a common option for balancing image quality and performance. End quote. Wes added that there is resolution scaling based on the target frame rate you set, but you're not given any control over that. Additionally, there's no option to disable the scaling. Of course, modders have already come to the rescue with a mod that does allow you to disable said scaling, but you know, you just wish we didn't have to go to such lengths for such basic options. Alex from Digital Foundry has also made a point about how bad the stuttering is on this port. He clarified that many may not notice the stuttering and even some software like RevaTuner wasn't picking it up, but it was absolutely there. I would think that this implies that the game is pumping out dummy frames so the screen gets a new buffer when VBlank comes around, but the buffer is just a duplicate of the previous frame. Alex said he's unsure of what is actually happening here, but I'm not sure how else you would see RTSS reporting a smooth 60fps when there are clear Clearly duplicate frames. This is all a far cry from Square Enix's own ports of Kingdom Hearts 3 and Final Fantasy XV. Especially given the increased price tag here, this is all pretty unacceptable. But if you're curious about playing this on Steam Deck specifically, here's what I can tell you. It is playable. On an Ionia Pro, I've seen reports of 1080p 30 or 720p 60 with low settings at about 15 watts. Keep in mind that there is dynamic resolution scaling, so it will not always keep these resolutions. Aside from that, openforeveryone.net is reporting that FF7R performs better on Linux than on Windows. That headline is a bit misleading though. While the game reaches higher peak frame rates on Linux, the Windows experience is a lot more consistent. That's going to be important to keep in mind as it may exacerbate the stuttering issue. So as you can see, neither hardware nor operating system is a hurdle here. This will be playable on Steam Deck, but it's still going to be a suboptimal experience. Aggressive resolution scaling, severe stuttering, and limited options show that this port needed a little more time in the oven. Hopefully, all these issues are resolved by the time it comes to Steam. By the way, we have some more good news for Linux gaming. Multiple outlets have reported on some new job postings from Amazon. It appears that they are on the hunt for engineers to join the Luna team, and they specified that these roles would work with Proton, DXVK, and Mesa. And check this out. They said, quote, Luna is committed to working with the open source community around Proton. This role will commit code to open source projects such as Proton and Wine in pursuit of running games in a stable and performant manner. End quote. Now, that's good marketing for that role. If they want someone that's passionate about free and open source software, they clearly want to advertise that the team is committed to advancing the code bases of free and open source software. But they'll have to make good on that promise, and that's good news for Linux gamers and really any Steam Deck owners. A tech giant with humongous purse strings that will hopefully help advance the state of Proton is pretty neat. Finally, I wanted to share some dev kit footage that is pretty exciting to me. First is Hypercharge Unbox. This isn't a game that was ever on my radar, but they've been pretty generous with their Steam Deck footage, which has had the effect of making me interested in their Toy Story-like game. In the latest footage of theirs, you can see the use of gyro to adjust from one nearby target to another. You can see they're using the analog stick for sweeping movements, and then using gyro for fine-tuned adjustments, just as the Lord intended. So thanks Digital Cyber Cherries for sharing. And ladies and gentlemen, here is Power Slave. Okay, I know everyone right now is like, what is this game, who cares? Power Slave is a bit of a lost gem from the early days of console shooters. We all know about Goldeneye and Turok. And more recently we learned that, hey, Doom 64 is actually a really good Doom game. Well, feast your eyes on Power Slave. 
originally released in 96 for PC and Saturn, and then in 97 for PlayStation, Power Slave has a bit of a cult following as an underrated FPS title of the era. The PC, PlayStation, and Saturn versions are all a bit different for numerous reasons. In particular, the console versions had a more Metroidvania-style progression. Recently, Night Dive Studios, who is renowned for their modern ports and remasters, announced that Power Slave is next on their list to remaster, and that it will combine levels from both the PlayStation and Saturn versions. And now, here it is on deck. Obviously, the footage is very blurry and brown, so let me just show you a bit of the trailer so you can see why I'm excited. So yeah, this game looks great. I can't wait to play it on deck. So before I end this video, I wanted to let you know that I intend for this to be my last video of the year. I'll be going on holiday and things are going to start heating up in January, so I'm going to have to be ready for the Steam Deck Blitz. In the meantime, maybe watch one of my playlists, or if you like this content but want to hear it on the go, I started putting these out as podcasts, so check that out. And otherwise, if you made it this far, you are a real one. And you may have heard this before. Like and subscribe. Slap the bell to get notified. Tell a friend it's a vibe. Deck gang out. Goodbye.